Got traffic there. Last there, just take it up to the departure end of the runway, then a left turn and a left downwind. Cessna over the threshold, coming up on the white dot, Adderby on the white dot, left turn first available. I got a high wind coming up on about a half mile final, clear to land Adderby on. Traffic on the left face, you're following a Cessna down, low off your left. Square it up just a little bit, and then we're going to get you in. Start your descent, though. Start your descent on the base. Traffic on final, give me follow on base. Base traffic, start turning toward the numbers now. High wind coming up on quarter mile final, take it all the way down to the green. Cessna taxiing on the green, expedite down to the next hard surface. Get me some speed, there you go, 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 go fast. This is going to be good. I got traffic on a mile final. You're following traffic ahead and to your right. High wing coming up on the threshold. Take it all the way down to the green dot. Bob Charlie Sierra, two mile final. A mile final. Turn north. Turn north, and we're going to just make you. Uh, we're going to bring you back around. Jet traffic's coming up on about a mile and a half final runway. Nine are clear to land. Okay. All right. Let's 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 listen up, guys. If you're on final for runway nine, I want you to offset to the left. I got a jet that's landing on runway nine. The jet's cleared to land runway nine. If you can make it. If not. Just continue straight ahead. It looks like you're going around for the jet. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, we had one right in front of us, sir. Dragger. Let's see. What we got? A tricycle. Tricycle. Put it down. Tricycle. Put it down. Tricycle. Put it down. Tail dragger. Down to the green. Uh, green dot. Then a left turn. Short final here. You click land on nine. All the way to the white dot. Go down to the white dot. Find somebody to follow out here. Canard, just come to the runway, and I might have to just send you around. That'll be fine. And for the jet, you just want to stay in this pattern, or you want to go back out for an instrument approach? Stay in a pattern. Charlie here. All right, just stay with me here for a minute. And my tail dragger, and eh, let's see, over the numbers, go down to the green. Come on. And Canard's going to have to go around. Canard, go around. Canard, go around. Canard, go around. And my uh, high wing here over the runway, keep it airborne. Keep it airborne. You do not descend. Do not descend. you got a fast guy behind you. Do not descend. My head. There you go. Keep it airborne. Keep it airborne. As soon as the guy behind you gets uh, slowed down, I'm going to put you down. So keep it airborne. The uh, one that just passed the white dot, make a left turn on the hard surface. All right, my uh, high wing tail dragger, you can put it down now. You can put it down now. And Charlie Sierra, let me get you about a mile off. Let's see, Charlie Sierra, I lost. There you are. Make a left hand turn. I'll try to resequence you here on the down ones. We'll see how it looks. Short final, you're clear to land runway nine on the white dot. Clear to land on the white dot. There you go. And the tricycle left on the hard surface and follow the flagman. Welcome. Uh, thanks for being part of the show. And let's see, just find somebody to follow out those, uh, follow on the final, and as you get close to the runway, if it's not going to work, we're going to send you around and then try to resequence you. Now, who else got sent around that's not back on the downwind? The Canard? Yeah, Canard. All right, Canard, there's a golf stream up there that went around, too. I just lost sight of him, but you're going to make kind of a left-hand turn and stay low. I think Charlie's here went for your altitude. 3,200. Okay, that'll be fine. Just maintain BFR. I don't know what else is up there above you. Probably most everybody's down here. So just make a left-hand turn. We'll try to get, uh, try to get you back here. Can our cut the uh, jet inside? Okay, the RV, maybe an RV-10, whatever, here on final. Keep your speed up and go all the way down to the... Uh, aim for the green dot for me. Uh, actually, keep your speed up. There's a guy behind you. Aim for the green dot. I'm sure that's plenty of room for you to land on runway 9. You're going to land on runway 9. Number two... You're going to go down to the white dot. Follow the white dot. Actually, you know what? That's 1,500 feet. You're going to land at the white dot. The uh, spacing looks adequate here. Two guys on final. You're kind of tight there. Keep each other in sight, and you're going to uh, aim for the white dot. If it's not going to work, we'll do. Uh, we'll come up with a plan B. We might have to send you around. The second guy behind the, you out there in about a two-mile final. Are you slow enough to be able to follow that guy in front of you? You need to go around. Well, I probably shouldn't ask that because I had about five guys to answer me, so I should know better than that. After 35 years, you would think, right? All right, so uh, let me see. The guy who's number one, it's number one. What kind of airplane is he? RV. An RV type. All right, RV type. Keep it airborne for me. Keep it airborne. And I got a fast guy behind you. The number two guy over the uh, uh, trees there. Go ahead and put it down on the numbers. Put it down on the numbers. My first guy just coming up on the numbers at the, uh, over the grass at the numbers. I want you to keep T minus one minute and counting. Hello.
Hello. Hello. Hello. Hello. Hello. Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody, and welcome to what could be one of the sunniest days in about the last six months. It was warm. It was dry. It was it was uh, lovely, and I was stuck at my desk in this cave all day, beaving away, as it were. And but as Martin was stuck says, before. no rain today. Yeah. And I think it's promising. I think this weekend is that. Well, we'll find out from Simon. But I certainly had a message from someone, a non-professional weather person, saying, "Weather's well, looking good on Saturday." Shock. So we'll see. We'll see. Well, that's... Yeah. Now, it, it, had had we been a team of professional, dedicated presenters, we'd have all had our tartan on, our kilts on, our <laughs> ginger hair on, and all that stuff, and daggers <laughs> stuck in our legs they or wherever they put them. Sorry, Dave's almost tired. He is almost tired. He's more lumberjack than tired. But anyway, it was. It was. I, I've got some mead wine. Anyway, anyway, moving on. Uh, let's enough of that. Let's say uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Sky Demon. Obviously, Sky Demon uh, support this channel, which is very, very, very kind of them, and uh, and good for them as well. So this week, a little bit of a different one. You may remember we asked a little while ago if you had any questions for Sky Demon. And this is what their first reply. The idea is we'll drop in the replies amongst the tips every, I don't know what it'll work out to, three, four weeks or something like that. So here's, here's your first reply from Scotty. Hi, I'm Hannah. And I'm Rob. And I'm Tim. And we are most of Team Sky Demon. Welcome to another session of questions and answers. What's Skydema support timeline for iOS and Android? For iOS versions, we have some leeway in what we support and what we don't support. We support a long way back. Currently, we support iOS 10, which is quite old. It's nearly eight years old. Um, and we support that far back because it helps lots of customers. Um, at some point, we do have to bring things forward because Apple only allows us to support a certain number of versions back. But that's eight years worth is quite a long time. Yeah, and that's the same for Android as well. We go back to supporting Android version 5, which is quite old. There's loads of information on our website. Just go to skydemon.pero and go to help and support. As Katkin says, all three together, there was I thinking it was just one person in different clothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Funnily enough, but I guess, I, I'm on a serious point, I guess the, the point they're making there is they support some odd stuff, which from time to time you get a question on, on Facebook or on the Flyer Forum saying, you know, how, how fast do I need my iPad stroke Android brick mm -hmm. to, to be able to run Skydemon? And, and the answer is hardware. It doesn't need to be like super, super sexy fast hardware. Okay, Indeed, fine. it is. Android five is back with the dinosaurs. Mm. Martin Martin Lusby said something like "dream team calling out." I wasn't entirely sure what that meant. Whether he was talking about us being the dream team, going a bit too slowly, and we need to speak fast, or or what? I don't know. But uh, maybe don't. you'll let us know. We can, we can take yeah. it on the chin. Right. Oh, sure. Yeah. Says yeah. 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 there was an awful lot of wine in the Sky Demon office, and I think you did, you did well. If that's what you picked up on in the spinning round <laughs> the Sky Demon office video. Well, yeah, and there's, and there's also in condition to see wine, of course. Mm. <laughs> in in some of the other tip videos, there's there's some there's some alcohol placed in some of the entrance, in, and there's there's even something else that's that's placed in one of them. You need to keep eye out, <laughs> see if you can see if you can spot it. I won't give you any more clues. Um, uh, great, right? Should we bring in uh, the weatherman? Yes, it's like <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, evening all, how are we doing? Hello. Who's, Good who's Simon, how are you? Yeah, all right, thank you. It was a better day for some of us today, wasn't it? I know not everybody. Yeah, Dave, I know. <laughs> like I said, if you would live in the southwest, what do you expect? But, um, yeah, it, it was a lot better for some of us. But, Dave, it could potentially be good news for you as well this weekend. So, right. yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying my best for, for everyone. Shall we take a look? Um, this is the uh, forecast chart for Friday. Now, remember last week, I did actually say that it may well change as we got through the end of this week and into next week. And it's still the sort of pattern. I think we've said, oh, I'm going to dread this on. I'm going to regret this. 
I think we've said goodbye to winter. That's not to say that it couldn't still be pretty horrible and we might still get some cooler weather. But I think what we've seen is that change from a winter pattern now into a spring pattern, which has been, of course, a very long time coming, hasn't it? This is another spring pattern for uh, tomorrow, if I can get my chart. So there we are. So, uh, yeah, this is another spring pattern for tomorrow. Southwesterly uh, flow across the country. This is, again, another uh, tropical maritime air mass in a warm sector. That's the bit between the warm front and the cold front. Now, what this tends to mean is that western coasts and hills do suffer quite a bit with low cloud and drizzle, which is what Dave had today uh, down across Plymouth. But tomorrow it's not quite so damp, uh, the air mass. So probably a chance of some higher cloud bases. But for many areas away from those western and southern coasts and hills, tomorrow should be bright. I think, again, dry. Bases of about 3,000 feet tops up at about seven or 8,000 feet. A bit bumpy, particularly through the Midlands and across northeast England, that kind of a combination of a stable airflow and also thermals. Um, I was down the airfield today and noticed how thermic it was. Lots of uh, birds circling around on those thermals. So I think probably it's one of the one of the first real thermal days we've seen of the spring. Now, uh, Scotland, different story, front line through Scotland, lots of low cloud around. That's going to bring bases of about a thousand feet. Tops um, probably on that about five or six thousand feet. So not particularly dense cloud, but still pretty low cloud pretty murky there certainly best of the conditions northeast england the midlands uh, east anglia parts of southeast england for tomorrow now saturday again we've got this southwesterly flow on saturday for many parts of england and wales it should be a decent day again basis three to four thousand feet tops about uh, eight to ten thousand feet but just notice this sort of finger of cloud and rain that's coming through Ireland into western and northwestern parts of Wales and also notice on the cloud ceiling forecast here how that kind of leaches into northwest England so that's the area really which is going to be uh, pretty uh, pretty murky I think through Saturday not particularly very flyable for most of us northeast England faring a little bit better but as I say most of central southern eastern parts of England and Wales should be okay as will be much of central Central and eastern Scotland on Saturday. That southwest wind, probably about 15 to 18 knots. So nothing particularly scary there. And then uh, Sunday, well, a decent day on Sunday as well. Let me draw your attention to the cloud ceiling forecast here. You notice that generally we're white and green colours. That means two, three thousand foot bases. Plus, yes, a little bit of uh, yellow colours here for Western Scotland. That ties in with a few showers that you see here across Western Scotland and across Western Ireland. But generally, Sunday looks to be a decent day. Light westerly winds overall, decent visibility and decent temperatures once more too. Uh, and uh, actually, do you know what? On, on Sunday, could see visibility perhaps 40, 50 kilometres. So it is one of those really potentially pleasant days on Sunday to uh, get out there. So it's nice to report some good news for once. And of course, because it's weather school on Saturday, that means that the weather's always great for flying. And I spend the first 10 minutes trying to convince everybody they'd rather be here rather than out there flying. Um, I've actually had one place become available on Saturday. So I know it's late notice, but if you want it, you can grab that now. It's going to be held here uh, at Weather School HQ in Wombourne. We're about three miles away from uh, Hapney Green, and that will run from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And you'll get me for the day, and we'll talk all things weather, and I'll get you flying more. But, uh, yeah, hopefully the weather will be good for you this weekend. Enjoy if you're out flying, and uh, I'll see you next week. Bye for now. Welcome to the summer. Right. Thank you. Cheers. And it's official. <laughs> That's right. Simon says goodbye to winter. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is Michael Fish. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Have a good one. Thanks, Cheers. Simon. Right. Well, that, cool. and that is promising. Yes. Questions a week. A little bit of a weather thing coming up next. Questions a week. Are you going to Aero next week in Friedrich Schaffen, or are you at this moment at Sun and Fun? Now, I've had a quick look at the weather forecast for Sun and Fun, thinking it's going to be you know, wall to wall sunshine. But right about now, they're having yeah. a heavy thunderstorm and there's mm. even a tornado warning going out. Um, yes. Tomorrow it's back to normal, sort of a high 20s to set you know, sun and temperature and lovely. But at the moment, it's looking pretty, pretty uh, off, if, ifish, offish. Mm. <laughs> Annabelle says, I'm going to Aero. I'm leaving tomorrow. Road, Road trip. trip. Ah. Nice. Really <laughs> well, if there is a tornado that makes its way through Lakeland, it's got half a chance of doing a couple of hundred thousand dollars worth of improvements, hasn't it? Uh, that is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Chris Winch says the air show at Sun and Fun was cancelled today. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not yeah. surprised. 
No. No. I'll go and I'll go and take a I'll go and take a look. There must be some webcams where you can see some porter porter bodies flying sideways across the airfield or something. Yeah, let's hope they're all safe. Yeah. 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 Johnny. Yeah. Club. So uh fly club members, welcome. Fly club non members, please join. Five quid a month or fifty two quid for the full year. Um, fly.co.uk forward slash membership to sign up. Um, this month, as we're going to be talking about with Paul Cadell, we've got uh, free landing vouchers all across Scotland. Ballado, Fife, Kingsmere, alongside Dornoch, Perth, Easter, Glenforsa, and Sky, and Clench Common. And just in, just to keep you southerners, us southerners, <laughs> happy. <laughs> Uh, and on April 30th, Tuesday the 30th, we've got Cy Wilson coming back, who was on last week to chat about flying tail draggers, uh, which should be good. He's got some good, interesting experience. Lots of insight there. A couple of good yeah. Yeah. I know we've got Cy doing tail draggers on the, on the 30th. Um, we've also got um, the next one in May is the AIB, I believe. Fantastic, um, and which mm. I think is going to be a really good one. I know some of the things I want to talk about, including the uh, the uh, the cap the cap ten tragedy. Um, mm. So I think that'll be I think that'll be a good insightful insightful little thing to look at. Right, oh, yeah. news. First, first up, before we get into the news, I need to say most of the news is, is really about an aero preview. Although we do no, let's do it the other way around. Dave, no, it's me first. Oh, it's you first. <laughs> I and it was all going so well. It was all going so well. I know. Okay, right. First things first. Those of you who are members, you will hopefully have noticed that there's a PDF upload every month. We take a uh, an extract of everything we've done over the previous month, made that into a PDF that you can download, you can read on the go. If you like reading things on paper, you can print them out, although, frankly, the better experience is on the web. Um, but it's there. It's there for you. So go take advantage of it. If you're not a member, then, you know, I guess you're a loser somewhere else in life as well. Um, that's probably not. That's probably not bad marketing, is it? Really? I'm no, no, I don't that. think so. <laughs> You've done a better job of marketing it sometimes. <laughs> well, yeah, in I, just I, moving I, on quickly. I, I, sorry. Moving on quickly uh, before we dig any bigger holes for ourselves. Uh, in non aero news, uh, Scampton is definitely going to become accommodation for asylum seekers. Uh, that was confirmed by the government and uh, the local council, um, who, because the government has just decided to stop faffing around, and they put in a special development order, which has gone before Parliament and is expected to become law today. And basically that wipes out any arguments because it gives them whatever powers they need to make it happen. The fact is that there are various hotels which currently house asylum seekers which are being closed. 100, 100 were closed during March, another 50 during May. So the space is needed. Um, there's some hint of a deal between the Home Office and uh, the local council, West Lindsay District Council, um, over what happens after the asylum seekers move out, which apparently is only going to be temporary. Uh, and they've also promised the Home Office, is, is, this is, to look after the heritage assets on site. I certainly trust the government, don't you? Well, they, did, they, they astonishingly they issued this fact sheet to do with it all, which is pages and pages long, and uh, every possible thing you can possibly ever think of is covered in there. That's probably so they can refer you to the fact sheet. It's like, yeah. if you've got a question, just check the fact sheet. Mm, yeah. 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 <clears throat> um, some online uh, online online GAR news. That's obviously it's a reminder that if you're flying overseas, uh, the new regulations have come into force, uh, and that means pilots, owners, and operators of private aircraft are liable for fines of up to ten thousand pounds if you do not provide border force with advanced passenger information online before they depart to or from the UK. Um, it came into effect on the sixth of April, and the Home Office says. It means border force and the police can better identify potential security threats, prevent and detect crime and monitor immigration status. Um, previously, advanced passenger information could be submitted by email, fax or other manual methods. Um, so, yeah, so don't, yeah, don't find yourself on the receiving end of a £10,000 fine because obviously they made it easy 
to to go you have messed up yeah mm. yeah the um the interesting thing in that press release that I, that I noticed was that they are i mean obviously there's a lot of ministerial um what's the word i'm looking for ministerial showing themselves to be jolly good people and saying we are taking back control of this and 84 there are now 84 because last year before this came to place until christmas you could basically leave pretty much any strip in the country and you because there was that blanket c of a um and they're very proudly saying that they've now reduced that number by 84 percent so we need 26 yeah well done you and it, it, it really is just about posturing is the word I was after. It's, it's more about posturing than it, than it is about anything else. And there's some other stupid stuff that's come about as well. Um, in as much as the border, border force have said, you know, a bit of an update basically, that if you need to divert and you can't call border force from your aeroplane to tell them about that, you have to land at the customs notified diversion airfield that you specified in your flight plan, which isn't actually a legal requirement and so they're kind of just making up other stuff and i for one if, if i ever need to divert because of weather or any kind of issue then the border force notification will be the last thing on my mind and the last thing in the list of list of things yeah. to consider when choosing a suitable diversion airfield yeah well i think it should be covered shouldn't it because p1 captain of the aircraft always yeah. has discretion to make the safe safety decision yeah yeah well it's yeah. not quite well what border force have said no <laughs> be an interesting one well, to in go fact, to court for. i mean it's completely opposite to what border force have said and and mm. they, they they had a consultation as we all know we everyone told them everything they needed to know and they chose to ignore it and clearly have no understanding of general aviation at our level whatsoever despite the fact no. that many people have offered to, to, to fill them in in more mm. ways than one anyway, Martin right. well said yeah bunch of yeah woo, woo. Yeah. Not my favourite. Not my favourite people. Uh, and then I guess lastly, we we forgot to decide who was going to do the story. Who wants to do the yeah. story on Icon? Well, well, this, this is a, the last story is about uh, Icon aircraft. You remember they make the A5 amphibian aircraft, and uh, it's, it's a it's a lovely looking thing. Um, lots of nice uh, points about it. However, Icon has gone bankrupt. It's gone into Chapter Eleven uh, bankruptcy. And the idea of Chapter 11 is it gives them time to uh, find some money, basically find another buyer to put some money in to keep them going. Yeah. The big problem with that aircraft is it's extremely expensive. It's almost $400,000 now for a, yeah. a two-seat light sport aircraft. That's, a, that's, a, that's quite, a, quite a hefty sum for a, you know, a small two-seater. That's really fine. If you want to that's what we There we go. A lovely looking thing and of course uh, you know it was it had just been they just got their faa certification hadn't they which was yes, the pathway yeah. to it appearing over in europe yeah mm. although they have yeah. got a european uh, base over here montenegro mm. um which i don't quite know how that works but they've somehow managed it yeah oh, no well. i mean I, I think i think it would be i feel sorry for all the people that so icon yeah. who, who may no longer have a job who, who or may have been furloughed who are not earning money it's, it's deeply sad ed and i ed and i i don't know if you remember ed on, i think it was on the way back from reno or something once oh, we drove past yeah. the icon headquarters in a place called vaudeville yeah in california this was at the peak of their peak of their marketing enthusiasm um and naivety some might say when they were saying we're going to deliver god knows how many there were a year and we expected to find this hive of activity and it was a pretty kind of tumbleweed kind of place when we drove past um, it was i i have a recollection of it looking if you've ever been to a sainsbury's and seen all the tents that they put up in the in the, like the store area it was there was a lot of tents wasn't it it was it was like it, was a lot. it, it did not match the professionalism of the the video stuff so hmm. I don't know what Sainsbury's is like where you are, Ed, but we don't have people <laughs> camping in them, all right? Maybe, maybe my Sainsbury's has just kind of run out of space. But, uh, oh, right. but yeah, it, I just have this... this, this what this is this Sainsbury's? Which, is it like Waitrose? <laughs> anyway, 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 right, that's 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 all the real news that we got this week. But this week really is um in, in many ways it's our preview, a preview show for Friedrichshaven, which is on Monday. And we have to 
we don't really have to, we would like to thank Continental Aerospace Technologies and Cirrus Aircraft for supporting it. It really, really wouldn't be possible to do what we do and what we plan to do at Friedrich Salvin without their support. So we've been looking to see the stuff that's coming along. We hopefully will reduce, we'll produce and release some kind of little sort of sneaky video on Tuesday as we get to look around behind the scenes, just a kind of small yeah. thing. And then on Wednesday, we're planning to bring you the absolute best of Friedrichshafen and the whole stuff. We were looking at what's new. And we'll talk about it in a minute. But it might we might even have to do a what's new at Friedrichshafen part two on Thursday if we don't manage to get around to all of the brand new stuff that's going on on Wednesday. It looks like it's going to be a really packed event, and I, for one, can't yeah. wait. So I thought um, I would kick off here by asking various people what, well, in fact, you people on screen, the team, as it were, <laughs> what is the thing they're most looking forward to at, uh, at, at Friedrichshafen. So, Because there's, there's going to be plenty, I think, isn't there? Yes. There there is. Is going to be plenty. What I'm most looking forward to it was revealed at Sun and Fun this week, and it's the Junkers A50 Heritage version. So ah. basically, Junkers uh, had some feedback from people, because you remember this is the, uh, uh, the two-seat open cockpit microlite that uh, Junkers is, is building. It's a replica of a 1930s aircraft, but originally they fitted a Rotax engine to it. Um, and it's been, they've had a bit of feedback saying it didn't look authentic enough with the Rotax. So they've now put this radial engine in, uh, the Averna seven-cylinder uh, engine, and it looks, it does look absolutely fabulous. I'm not mm. quite sure about wearing all that gear, and I'm certainly not ever going <laughs> to ever going to stand like that. <laughs> But, um, but apart from that, ignore that. It, the aeroplane itself looks lovely. So this is they put the put the Werner Verna Scarlet radial on it, which is mm. really good. And apparently, lots of people went putting a G three X Touch in that aeroplane was the wrong idea because now they're offering offering it with analog gauges. <laughs> That's right, conventional instruments oh. and a split screen. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah, yeah. I am. I'm looking forward to seeing that in the flesh. Uh, and in fact, I, I think we all know by now, at least those who've been before. Pretty much everything apart from one airplane on the Junkers stand is, is gorgeous and beautiful. And they're jolly nice people that occasionally, you know, just go to prove that we can all make mistakes sometimes. And yeah. I, yeah. I wonder if the A60 <laughs> has got any more attractive. <laughs> Let's hope so. Let's yeah. hope so. Ed, how about you? What are you? Um, I, I think for me, um, the, uh, so there's an airplane called the Bristol B23 Energic. Um, and this is a, a, a collaboration between uh, Bristel and a company called H55. Um, H55 is the Swiss company set up by former Solar Impulse, the former Solar Impulse team, um, which was led by Andre Borschberg. Um, and this is to create a certified electric propulsion and battery management system tailored to a diverse range of aeroplanes. But they put it in the Bristel and that's going to be a CS23 certified aeroplane. And we've been watching bits of this uh, they've had a stand over the years and they brought bits along, but this is the first time the aeroplane will actually fly to the show. And there should be a photo of it in the um, in the comments, in the photos there somewhere. I think, I think you've got a little video clip. Of oh, even that. Brilliant. It's, it's a relatively short video clip, but here you go. And it's got no music because we don't like copyright stuff. So Just feel free to okay. speak over it and describe it. Uh, okay, so this, uh, so this is at their base at Scion in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's certainly a couple of prototypes flying, um, and the that that aeroplane you just saw on screen, that's the one they're flying to uh, from Switzerland to um, to Friedrichshafen. It's an interesting aeroplane. It's got 190 kilogram payload, max takeoff weight 850 kilograms, climb rate 800 feet a minute, uh, an hour's endurance with half an hour's uh, with 30 minute reserve. So that's uh, I'm obviously Pipistrelle have been in, you know, been to the training world with their with their Velas Electro, but this is probably a more, you know, maybe a more flying school friendly aeroplane. I don't know. Um, cost to charge for the hours flight they rep reckon is going to come in at under six pounds, and they're aiming for CS23 certification by mid 2024. So, yeah, I think the other thing about H55 is the other thing about H55 sure. is they're aiming to produce a. Uh, a power a power plant power system from mm. start to finish that can be dropped into almost any aircraft. They're not I just making it for this particular Bristol. Yeah, yeah, and obviously yeah. the Bristol was Rotax powered, so you've got to think that there's going to be that's offering electric propulsion potential for lots of things with Rotax. Yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, I think that the, the six quid an hour thing is a little bit of a red herring, though, isn't it? I mean, the electricity in the six quid an hour is, is great, but you can't go for a rent at six yeah. quid an hour. It's, 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 it's an awful lot more than that. Um, yeah. Understandably, because mm -hmm. aircraft is bloody expensive as well. Johnny? Um, yeah, so one airplane that's, I think, would hopefully start filling up some sort of flying schools and in, in, in clubs in the future. It's the Aura Aero Integral, um, which is the, the tail tail dragger version, especially. It's a great. I don't know if you've got a photo of it, but it's a great looking the machine. Bad news is, my picture appears to have disappeared. Oh no! <laughs> this sort of like uh, this is a, yeah, yeah, we side by side aeroplane, Johnny. Yeah, uh, yeah. So they, they've. Um, I think we. Uh, I, I definitely saw it. I think two years ago at Aero. Um, but they're out now with, um, I think since then they've developed the S, which is the nose wheel version. Yeah. And the, the E, which is going to be both the tail wheel and the nose wheel with, um, obviously with an electric power plant, um, which they're claiming is going to fly this year with a Safran, some Safran engine. Okay. Um, but yeah, the base tail dragger, the Integral R, looks like, a, I think it's a great looking machine, but the, I think it's got an 0360, 210 horse. Um, it, yeah. A good airplane to fit the, as they market it, the UPRT market, okay. advanced aerobatics, it's plus minus eight, I think. Um, and there's, yeah. A, yeah, there's, there's a bit of a sort of spicy spicy look to it it's a good looking machine yeah I agree the, the tail dragger looks really good and when you see it in the in the real in the flesh it kind of sits really high on the mm. on the main wheels which it gives it a really good look the tape the nose drag off versions of it which are probably going to be the better sellers and certainly the electric yeah. one look a little bit more frumpy even though it's the same fuselage mm. yeah yeah. So yeah. apologies for the picture it does that sometimes doesn't it? We know why. yeah what um mm. what did you go for I, 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 I think this is a bonkers airplane, which is basically the carbon cub fitted with the 916, uh, 916 <laughs> Rotax. 161 horsepower out of a microlite carbon cub. If they get that through, I'd say like a 600 kilogram microlite with all of the lack of bureaucracy that goes with the microlite world and 161 horse up front, that thing's going to be an absolute hoot. I, I, I guess. It, it, it's been a year since they announced that, but obviously announcement came along, but we, no one's seen the aeroplane, really. It didn't appear at Aero last year. It didn't appear at Oshkosh. But now they're saying no. uh, you know, it, it's going to be – there's a demonstrator in the, in the US and in Europe. So chances are I, I, I haven't seen it at Sun and Fun, so I'm guessing maybe us Europeans get to see it first. So I, I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Amongst the other stuff that we – we think um, Technam are teasing a new aeroplane that they're going to reveal at half past 10 on Wednesday. I think it's, personally, I'm going to plump for a guess and say it's a microlite version of the Technam Astor, but I have no inside knowledge or anything else. That is just a pure guess on that one. Um, I reckon that's a good just, guess. But, you know, who knows? You know, we'll, we'll let you know on Wednesday whether it, or Wednesday and Thursday if that was or it wasn't. But the yeah. Piper M700 Fury, who's excited about seeing that? Exactly. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think it looks that different to any other to the M600, does it? No, basically. No. I still want to know um, why they called it Fury. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. But on the other hand, you know, it's a, it's a 300 knot turbo prop. That's that. That'll be fun. It's 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 probably out of well, I say probably out of my range because it's out of my range. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, have to sell, I'd have to sell my house several times over. Um, but anyway, yeah. And then we've got, we've got the motor glider, which I, they're great aircraft, but it's difficult to get that excited about them, isn't it? Really? Um, well, yeah, that's from JMB, isn't it? Uh, yeah. There's going to be the Chinese um, a hydrogen fuel cell electric aeroplane. <laughs> this one, yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. yeah. I'm, I, I'm prepared. To, I'm. When when I see that in the flesh, I'm prepared for my eyes to automatically close themselves and go, "Don't make me do it." <laughs> I, I think I read somewhere that they were not only bringing it along, but they were going to be running it at various times as well. Yeah, which I think I think that'll be that'll be quite funky. I mean, the thing is, yeah, quite I mean, ugly. It's, it's, 
it's interesting. I mean, when you think the Chinese show up with a hydrogen fuel cell aeroplane, whereas Textron are turning up with the Cessna 182 turbo. <laughs> Which is just, re- just announced that they're going to re- start rebuilding new Cessna 182 turbos. They've been doing the 182 for a while, but the 182 turbos coming back. I think that's a smart, well, it's, yeah, that's a smart move from their point of view. Mm. Um, we'll yeah. also take the opportunity of asking the corporate people who are there on the Textron stand what's happened to Beechcraft because you can't place an order for a Bonanza or a Baron anymore, and the Bonanza is probably lost its record in that case of being the longest uh, the that, airplane. In mm. if they, uh, Ed, you'll have to research and see what's coming up next. Yeah, yeah, that's see, that's that's the right. second longest. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, so, and obviously, uh, 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 avionics-wise, Dynon, uh, um, they have unveiled it at uh, Sun and Fun this week, but it'll also be at Aero. This is their big screen, 12 inches of um, Dynon Skyview HDX. So, um, mm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Looking forward to that. Right. I think that's probably enough speculation about what we will and won't see and what we're looking forward to next week. We forgot our traditional schnitzel meal on the Friday before we leave. Dave would have already gone back, so he'd have schnitzel. One man schnitzel Billy No Mates on his own on Thursday instead. <laughs> we'll, enjoy, we'll, we'll enjoy that. <laughs> but we, but we will have the benefit of, Anna, of, of Annabelle Cook uh, joining us hopefully for a live stream on Thursday night from probably my hotel room again, seeing as I usually have the best internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> indeed. So I think we should probably just explain Wednesday live for members live stream extra three o'clock. We're going to. We're going to have a crack at it, but it's it's very challenging with regards to um, bandwidth and all sorts of things there. We see what we can do. Normally, we end up shouting, and, and all of the comments are just basically saying, can't hear you. Bandwidth's yeah. rubbish. Really jerky. <laughs> what are you saying? Turn that You're music off. <laughs> so if we can't do something good, we won't do anything at all. Um, and then on Thursday night, we'll be uh, all piling around to Ed's hotel room, I guess. Or yes. something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, so now yeah. Our, tr- our guest tonight flies so much, he's rarely on the ground. And with his trusty group-owned Eurostar based at Eshot, he's no stranger to Scotland, in fact. Uh, with around a dozen or so flying adventures published in Flyer over recent years, Paul Goodell knows Scotland better than most, which is why we invited him on tonight uh, to help tell us how best to take advantage of those nine Scottish land- free landings available to Flyer Club members. Paul Goodell... We salute you. Welcome to the live stream. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How are we all doing? I, said, I, I hate those big build-ups. You just set me up for failure, right? Yeah. You... <laughs> if, if anyone deserves a big build-up, Paul, it's you. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Um, yeah, Scotland. Scotland's amazing, isn't it? I think, uh, first of all, the, the was it, uh, how many? What, nine? Nine free landings? Nine free landings. Yeah, uh, unbelievable effort, that. Absolutely brilliant. And very conveniently sort of organised so I can do a... A 650 mile round robin trip. I'd rather do it over two days, but uh, it's doable in a day. We're, we're already at 15 hours daylight, flyable, um, half an hour before and half an hour after. So it's doable, but maybe split over a couple of days if it ever stops raining or the, the, the wind's blowing. Yeah. Absolutely miserable up at Airshot lately. <laughs> so tell us so, what is it that makes Scotland special? Well, do you know what? It's, it's amazing. It's so compact. From, from Cape Wrath down to the Mull of Galloway, just south of Stranraer, is only 274 miles. And at its w- widest point, it's 150 miles wide, the mainland. Um, and actually, because of all the little inlets and that, you're never 50, more than 50 miles from the sea. So it's very compact. Yet And yet the, the coastline, because it's so jaggedy, the mainland coastline is 6,000 miles. Wow. Now, I reckon you could, I did a little calculation. I think you should pretty much straight line it around the coastline without going, you know, in and out all the time. You could probably see it all in 1,200 miles of flying. And within that, you've got, you've got 790 offshore islands, which less than 100 are inhabited. You've got 1,500 castles, 200 lighthouses. You've got 282 Munros, which so that's mountains higher than 3,000 feet. So, you know, within that very compact area, it's absolutely rammed with great stuff to see. Probably about 90-ish landing sites that I'm aware of, uh, probably 75 in the guides. There's 
15 plus a, a bit more private um and, and everywhere you go people are just so friendly even to me i think because my wife's from aberdeen i'm sort of tolerated up there i guess uh, <laughs> kids are half Scottish, so I'm tolerated so that sort of works uh but it's very accessible and i think you know you're going to scotland you're getting a bit of it's sort of scandinavia and then canada and then new zealand and yet it's all so accessible for us in the uk you know even dave in in you know in pasty land he's not that far away pick one of a fa one favorite destination i realize it's it's tough um, and we've, uh, I mean, it's really difficult, Ian. I think, in the course, we all think, I think when we think, most people on here will think West Coast straight away, which is sensational in good weather. Um, and, you know, they sort of gravitate towards Glen Forza because Brendan and Alison have got that ultimate package. I'm speaking to him this week. There's one of my, one of my picks from a great bit of Eurostar wing. And um, I think the location is just fantastic. The food's good. You get great crack there. The rooms, if you can get one, are, are super. You can camp on the airfield. And I was speaking to Brendan this week. The strip's in great shape. He opened at Easter. A lot, a lot of Flyer members were up there. A lot of my pals managed to get in over the Easter weekend. Uh, Derek Paik and a few others, and had a really good time. Um, so he's got he's got a good he's got his good crew back. He's got the good chef and and the support staff. Um, they're all geared up for this year. The hotel is still for sale. Um, but he's committed to another year again. He's absolutely delighted, I'm sure. And <laughs> when I was speaking to him the other day, he was just pulling out his nice uh, super cub uh, from winter storage in, in Oban. Obviously, he doesn't leave it to the ravages of uh, on, the, on the strip there, the, the ravages of the weather. So he's looking forward to the year. Super excited to get back up there. And I think the other great thing about Glen Forsa is that it's so central for touring the west coast of Scotland. So... I know a lot of people will inevitably, if they, you know, that's on their list, that's their dream place to visit. They'll, they'll fly in and then they'll go home sort of thing. But use it as a base. It's about, takes me in the Eurostar maybe 40 minutes by the time I've zigzagged low level, looking at all the sites, up to the sky in Plockton. Um, and then if you go west, you've, you've got wonderful uh, coal and then Tyree, which is one of the high, higher airfields, which we can talk about briefly. Uh, yeah, so that that area is absolutely stunning, and it's very you know it's I think it's 15 miles west of um, the, the western end of uh, of Mull, I think. So it's not far over water. It's very accessible, and Col is run by um, it's run by Argyll and Butte Council, like Oban, and it's less than a tenner to land there. Okay. Same as Colonsay, just to the south, just to the south is Colonsay. And and that's on the way to to um, Isla, and and again, that is an absolutely fantastic island. And you can park your plane there for less than a tenner, and you can go and paddle in, in the sea. And you'll probably be the only ones there. And if you're there with your mates, it's absolutely idyllic. So I'm really pleased, you know, amongst the carnage of the, the high hour increase in charges, that we can still access your coal, coal and say you, you have to apply for annual um, indemnity through the Open Airport website, but it's free. You apply for that free. Just got to prove you're insured in case you hit one of the visiting islands, I guess, or something. But um, they're absolutely beautiful islands uh, and much overlooked and uh, and so easy to access from Glen Forsa. So mm. if so you talk to you, Raven, that, that's kind of one of, I mean, one of the things that all of those hundreds and thousands of things you mentioned are great, but there's not quite that many Abgas stops in Scotland. And Oban is one of the, one of the places to, to fill up and explore onwards. Um, how much yeah, of an issue I think is that? It's, it's a massive issue, Ian. I think, especially for the, you know your traditional Avgas, the, the SEP community, you know the traditional Piston community. Um, us micro -like guys have got a lot of contacts throughout Scotland, in, and inevitably we can call on a mate to take us down the garage and do a fuel run. So we're we're, we're very fortunate in that respect. Um, but you know. Avgas now, especially with the high hiking hike in charges, is a real drama because you've got Oban, Cumbernauld in the middle, and then Perth and, and uh, Fife, Glenrothes on the east coast. But north of that, the only place you're going to get Avgas is going to be a high out, be Wick, um, 
Torrey doesn't have uh, up in at Stornoway, Kirkwall. So if you're going, if you're going north to to the Orkneys or Shetlands, you're going to have to pay your forty quid for a fuel stop at Wick or whatever, which is mm -hmm. pretty brutal. Yeah, I mean, it's probably worth it's probably worth taking a little side step here and just reviewing how we are currently seeing and feeling about the whole Highlands and Islands. Uh, price hike and really it's the the i mean they're all every price hike is bad clearly um but the the one that's really remarkable from them i, I think is is the is the parking charge which which very quickly turns a an overnight trip into one that frankly most people are not going to bother with at highlands and Islands airport because it just makes it ridiculous and their their will of trying to get more money for the taxpayer is, is basically going to give them less money and less money in the local economy um yeah, I totally agree. I think I think I said the other day, I think there's a serious political element as well. Because to me, that's really... The Scottish government is always trying to reduce the isolation of these remote uh, island communities. And, and you know, like you say, if you're charging someone a couple of hundred quid to stow overnight in Isla and go to their favourite distillery, they just ain't going to do it. You know, we, we, it'd be very few people who, who could fork out that sort of money for an overnight stay. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No, it, 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 it. So I was going to say it's a complete lack of imagination on the uh, Highlands and Islands airports on how mm. to make uh, how, how to increase their revenue. You know, instead of penalising the pilots who are going to fly there, you know, think up some revenue generating ideas for them to uh, to tie up with the brewery. The, the not the breweries. What are they called? Distilleries. <laughs> Distilleries. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I have seen a couple of letters. So, sorry, uh, just to, just before everyone gets too depressed about it, I have seen a couple of letters in, in response to complaints that the people have made saying that hinting quite strongly that there's going to be a review of that element. So if we hmm. keep up the pressure and keep our fingers crossed and point out the fact that we want to we want to bring them some money and, and what they're doing will stop us bringing them money, um, I, I, you know, I'm relatively hopeful that it will get sorted. Whether it will get sorted back to what it used to be or not, I don't know. So, you know, so, one um, big question, Paul. In all of your photos on your trips, the weather is stunning. How on earth do you manage to pick the weather to be so good? Yeah, I, I think I think that's. A, I'm lucky. I, I'm part time. You know, um, I, I tend with my Scotland trips, unless I'm, you know, really trying for a, one of the marvelous flies I have up there from, you know, from, from Lambholm to Easter to to, to Glenforsa. Uh, there's so many good flyings up there. Uh, if it's not a flying, I, I literally try and wait for the good weather to arrive and, and ring my mates, ring all the other, all, all my other microlighty type friends. Although I must admit, a lot of them have, have abandoned the Eurostar to go pioneer and get a bit more speed so they can get home in the same month and uh, <laughs> and, and just gather them up. And, and, and then we tend to just to go. And so, you know, I, I know a lot of people in a lot of clubs and it's, it's hard if you're full time working. It is hard. I appreciate that. But they'll, they'll plan all year for the certain weekend. And of course, you know, the weather's crap and they, they never go. Um, so I think flexibility, weather up there is such a drama, as we all know. And you've always got to have it changes so quickly. And even even on mole, they have three different you know seasons in, at the same time. Um, you've really got to have a plan B, C, D. Um, and also the other thing I'd say when, when I'm talking about weather is, is mountain flying. You know, you've really got to respect the mountains. And if you have it, if you're from, you know, the home counties, you've never gone up there. I'd really recommend uh, uh, reading up and, and maybe talking to people. The New Zealand CAA, and I think Ed might have the link. Thank you. Uh, uh, do a wonderful uh, summary uh, of mountain flying and the dangers, especially winds aloft, especially if you're coming from the flatlands. You, you know, you see, I was calm winds today. Brilliant. But, uh, you know, 3000 feet might be blowing 35 knots and. And sadly, in the last 20 years, we've had a fatality with a very experienced couple of guys who, you know, it was a beautiful day, went too close to the summit and and, and it killed them and they lost control in the, in the rotor. So it's a very serious, serious issue. So that's a great resource to read. In fact, one outcome of that accident was the AIB, in fact, we have to ask them about that, recommended CAA they produce their own one but they never got around to it so I, I personally still refer people to that that mountain flying thing from New Zealand which is excellent very good 
Um, yeah. Paul, An Annabelle asks, if you could only visit one Scottish oh. strip for the rest of your life, which one would it be? <laughs> I've spoken to nearly all of them this week. They're all going to murder me now. Uh, I love you. I, I love you. It's Butte is owned by the Mount Stewart estate and they, they just let pilots run it. Mainland pilots run it. It's paid for by donations, uh, by pilot donations. It, the, 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 it used to be two wonderful guys who both sort of retired from flying. Now they're in the race pretty much. I think Sandy might be slightly younger. Sorry, Sandy, Sand, Sandy, uh, Cameron, Willie long. And they, for years, they, they, you know, they gathered money up. They paid a farmer to cut the grass and fix things. They bought a windsock and it is idyllic. And I go there, I go there every month. Um, and it's just idyllic. So there's a guy called Ross Mitchell, who's based at Straven. Hi, Ross. Um, he, he's C42 pilot, and he's taking it on now. So, again, he's put a couple of picnic tables there. And if you've not been for a long time, they cut the trees down on the 27 threshold. So it's 480 metres. Uh, I know friends in 182s have been in here. And, um, you know, it's got to be right. It drains really well. And then you've got the, the King Garth pub is, is just a 10-minute walk away. And I just love you. It's great. I've camped there and, and I've cooked there. And you see, see, you know, Aaron and that in the distance. It's, it's idyllic. But, you know, they're all bloody fantastic, to be honest with you. I don't think I've been anywhere in Scotland and come away and thought, oh, I'm not going back there. It's, the community is so tight. They're so helpful. Everywhere is different. Uh, um, and the scenery is just even, superb. And, and the East Coast is, is also brilliant. And I think that's really overlooked. That, that run up from Perth and you can go up the coast there is beautiful. Uh, and Aberdeen, Aberdeen have a great um, transit of the CTA where you basically fly. Going north, you fly offshore below 1,500 feet. Coming south, you come down uh, onshore below 1,500 feet. And the views are brilliant. You can even go past the Trump golf course and fly a, and tow a banner or something if you want. <laughs> mm. And of course, Longside to get to the head, Longside, one of the, one of the free landings. There, there are great LAA microlight community there. You know, you take that route up the coast, and it's absolutely stunning. It really is fantastic. So uh, I thought we might I, maybe you got some. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, comment, Roger Iveson says, uh, PK has not been to Lambholm on Orkney, my favourite airfield in Scotland. Thanks, Tommy. Are you hoping to get to Lambholm sometime? So, Ro Roger's one of my best flying mates and we go everywhere together. And I think three three times, it's looked, the weather has looked fantastic. And once we set off and it all got fogged in and just never got... I've had three abortive attempts at Lambholm, even when 30 miles away, it's been lovely. <laughs> so it's, it's my jinx airfield so this year but I, i'm not even going to talk about it tommy sinclair there the italian chapel everything absolutely fantastic strip that, that i'm desperate to get to this year okay uh linda griffith asks have you ever managed to get ppr at upper mersky hopefully i've got that right near aberdeen mm, no yeah i think unless it's called something different i mean there's i do go into a few strips my, my wife's uh from there and I, I i go into a fair few strips in that area um i'm not sure unless it's got an alternate name which a lot of them have just to catch people like us out and, and enjoy our comedy pronunciation <laughs> so if out, out of all the out, I, hopefully everyone if you yeah. if you're going to use the, the flyer free landings you might get to every one of them if you had to pick just a, like two or three of those flyer free landings where would you aim to go they're all doable. They're all, they're all doable. I mean, I think, you know, firstly, I whiz off from their shot. I talked to wonderful um, Scottish information, who, by the way, are absolutely brilliant. They pre-note all your transits and everything. It's like having a, you know, a best friend on, on frequency. They're, they're, they're just, they're so knowledgeable and supportive. I think perhaps because they don't have the volume that London information gets. Uh, but they, and they know most of us by name, you know, it's fantastic. So I talk to them, I get to pre I'm going to go over Edinburgh, I'm going to go over the fourth road bridges, do a couple of orbits. Um, Edinburgh is superb at Edinburgh ATC. You might have to do a couple of orbit bits, and, but they will thread you through, um, even when people are on like two, two mile finals, which is a bit disconcerting. I'm going to go around the bridges a couple of times, then I'm going to do all the Fife area. So there's Kingsmuir, which is a lovely grass strip in Fife. I'm going to do Fife Glenrothes, where the cafe is just reopened with, with a really good menu. So I'm looking forward to that. That's Jim Watt who runs that these days. 
and then uh, I go over to Ballardo. Ballardo is one of the, one of the biggest up and coming airfields in the UK at the moment. I'd say in the past couple of years, um, Jamie Alexander's built three thousand meters squared of new hangarage, like super duper hangars, really top end hangars. Um, it's a really, really great place to go, really up and coming place. Um, and then I'm going to go and see them. They haven't got fuel yet. He's looking at doing that next. Then I'm going to go up to Perth to see all my pals like Elaine, uh, Ian Course at Scottish Air Club there. And then I'm going to get my fuel there and zoom up to Peterhead, Longside, so up the coast. Then I can come along the Morrie Firth, go and see uh, David Munro and David Eads at um, Wonderful Easter, which is an absolute bowling green. What a pleasure to go in that airfield. That's a top, top UK airfield. Uh, over to Dornock, which is wonderful. See the golf course, and that's really nice. Over the Glenmorangie Distillery, just to take in the fumes, and then uh, and then we're going to come down the Great Glen, all the way to Oban. Another fuel stop into Glenforcer. Where have I missed? Into oh no, Isle of Skye. Sorry, up from Oban to the Isle of Skye, back to Glenforcer, back home for tea and medals. Oh, and then I probably run out of time to do Clench Common. <laughs> but that, 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 that's that's a doable day i think i think an overnighter would be good either on glen force or peterhead there's loads of um they're a great crew at longside there's loads of hotel options in peterhead we've stayed overnight there before before we've gone down the great glen um so yeah it's if you actually get your sky demon out and plot them all it's a really doable trip what's this place here eastdale is that, is that oh, a good place to that brings me to, to to a really good point, Ian. I think I see a lot of people who, who you know, they sit at 3,000 feet, they fly to Glen Forster, they have a brilliant time, and then they go 3,000, fly home. If, if I could say one thing to people, it's just, you know, enjoy the journey. Find a couple of things that are really interesting on your journey and go and have a look. Easdale Island is my favourite island, and that's on the way to Glen Forster going up the coast. It was the centre of... Um, the British Empire's slate mining operation. Oh, okay. And it's a, it basically did all the roofs in Sydney to Vancouver. You know, it, it did the whole empire. So those huge holes were, 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 you know, the slate was taken out of the quarries. And then there was a massive storm in the late 19th century that flooded the bloody things and killed it overnight. But now it's famous for the World Stone Skimming Championships are held in those little ponds. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> but places like that, that there's so much to see low down you know just and, and you know not everyone's going to want to fly around like i do at 500 feet we all have our own 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 perception of risk you know i, I totally get that but certainly go to have a have a look at a few of these places the um you know you've got the harry potter um viaduct glenfin and viaduct that the steam train goes along you know you can intercept that just just near fort william there that's just up from oban around the corner um, there's so many pl where 633 squadron was filmed at Lake Mora. You can go that fly down there and see all the watch the film before you go, and it, it's all very familiar. And you know, there's so much to see, and, and just enjoy the journey. I think, yeah, oh, absolutely. So, have you, how many, out of all the trips you've had in Scotland, how many, how many times have you intended to be to make it home and then? Thanks to a bit of weather or something, have ended up with a with an unscheduled night somewhere. Uh, never, I've always, we've always come back. We've always got ahead of the weather. We've 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 clipped our trip sometimes. Uh, shout out to my mate John Crook. We went up to Glenforcer one day, and he's from uh, he, he's from down your way actually. He, I think he lives around the corner from Ed. He does, and yeah. um, he's just leaving the Eurostar gang to buy a Pioneer. Just don't talk to him anymore. But he. He was staying overnight in Glenforcer, and I said, you need to get away sharp tomorrow because the wind's getting up. Of course, had a few too many whiskeys, didn't he? It was a bit late leaving. It, the weather was so... He had to divert into Butte, and he ended up staying there five nights. <laughs> <laughs> There's a blue plaque on the wall to, to commemorate his stay. He was there that long. He, they, they, got a, they got a ferry to Glasgow because they got bored of going around, around Butte for five days. I would... I would imagine he probably got citizenship, didn't he? For that, for that, <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, sure. we've always got home here. And I, the only time, I, the only one trip I got stuck was coming back from a Northern Ireland trip, where again, 
what quite often happens if there's high pressure of the of the uh, sort of our north of Ireland and and west coast of Scotland quite often brings in easterlies at Eshop with low crap off the North Sea, and we we got stuck once and had to go back back to the Lake District and and kip the night in a hangar. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Well, as right. as Aviator Steve says, you've got to love your enthusiasm. I don't think there's. I you are probably the most enthusiastic flyer I know personally, um, and I know you have a great love for Scotland. Uh, fancy hangar, we are picking aeroplanes for a Scottish tour, so maybe you'll hang around, and and you can be the judge along with the audience uh, of uh, of our fancy hangar choices. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to be a pleasure. Does that mean it's time? Excellent. I think yeah. it is time. Yeah. So obviously, Paul's been telling us all about uh, fabulous, uh, fabulous Scotland. Um, so we figured we'd challenge ourselves to find fabulous aeroplanes in the classifieds to go, to take on a Scottish tour. So who's first? I'm first on this one this this week. It would it would appear. I think. What's it going to yeah, be? Yeah. And, well, I, I've gone for the ultimate aircraft for someone. I reckon this is perfect aircraft for Scotland. I'm sure Paul's going to agree. It's not a Euro star, but it's it's close. It's it, oh. it's a it's PC six. Ah. Okay. Put your nice. mates in the back. Now, it's, the only downside is it you know cruise speed is probably about 120 130 knots, which is not super fast, but you know you could get by with it. You can stick your mates in the back, in and out of pretty much any strip that you can get any micro light in and out of all over Scotland. It's super tough. There are plenty for sale in the classifieds. Um, roughly 1.9 million, which is a little bit of a shocker. Um, but if the weather gets bad, no problem. Stick a set of skis on it. If it gets really wet, no problem. Stick, stick a set of amphibs on it. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's not the prettiest airplane in the world. I'll give you that. But it is unbelievably capable. Um, and for, for the only, the only sticking point is 1.9 million, really. That, I mean, that's a proper Land Rover of an airplane for Scotland, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And you could probably. You know, make your money at weekends doing some parachute dropping or something. I don't know. Just to, yeah. just to offset them. Not 1.9 million quid's worth, probably. Okay. Just yeah, that, would be, that would be my choice. And it is for sale in the classifieds. So there are plenty of them for sale. Excellent. Good. So, Who's next? To Mr. Calderwood. Right. And well, I've taken uh, the hint from, uh, uh, from Paul and gone for a microlite because I think it'd be good for the fuel, for, for, for that reason. Also very easy and nice to fly. I wanted a high wing aircraft to give uh, better visibility. You know, if you're flying over gorgeous countryside scenery, you want to see it. So uh, I've gone for a high wing. It's the Technam P92. And this is the Mark II version, the new one. Um, and it's just, it's, a, it's just a lovely aircraft. And it's got, you know, it's quite economical on fuel. So and it could, can run on, uh, on no gas if need be um so it's a it's a a good handy aircraft for this particular type of flying um clearly it uh, can be in a micro ride doesn't need much in terms of uh, landing strip you know you can much of runway you can take off and land almost anywhere so that's my choice very good no. how much are you? well i found one in the classifieds but they haven't actually because it's quite new they haven't actually put a price on it it's an ex demo aircraft, but I so I suspect that's going to be costing a fair chunk. Are they, are they probably around about 130, 140k, something like that? You put them around that, yes, 140,000. I'm yeah. going to go for around 100, 100 a bit. They're probably a bit cheaper than the PC6. Mm. I reckon so. Oh, yeah. You could put you could put one in the back of a PC6, could you not? <laughs> in, in, if, if, if you fly fast enough at the doors, you could, yeah. Take <laughs> <laughs> it apart first. Johnny, what do you go for? Right, I've gone for a goose, but not just any goose. The McKinnon Super Goose, Ooh. which is for sale. Um, it's on Platinum Fighters. Um, so this goose, if you don't know, the McKinnon G21G con configuration, they spent 10 years restoring it, um, fitted with PT6s. 
It's got lovely, lovely wet leather seats inside. It's got oxygen for passengers and crew. Um, automatic bilge pumps. If you, it's just fitted with absolutely everything you could possibly need. Um, looks amazing. They've done some good, good trips with it. Um, just looking on the map that they've got on the sales site they've been almost they've been across the Aleutians almost to Russia they went to the Faroe Isles last summer via Greenland and Iceland um, they've done the Bahamas in it this is based in Seattle at the moment nice. um, but yeah amazing beautiful machine the downside is it's three million dollars <laughs> wow that makes, that makes Ian's Porter look positively reasonably priced Cheap. I yeah. think it's it's nice to have an aeroplane where you have an automatic bilge pump. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, Lyndon yeah. Griffith makes a good point. You can't, you won't be get getting into many <laughs> short strips, but you don't really need to when there's so much water. That's that's yeah. a good point. I, can you access the water? Is the the water accessible up in Scotland? Well, yeah. if 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 I owned an Enreg, I'd just come over, do it. What's what's the um, beg for forgiveness rather than there pollution. we go. <laughs> uh, you can, and you sure. can. And anyone, anyone seeing that goose would be like they'd be excited about yeah. it not not going that i need to complain to someone yeah mm. yeah so, well, that's just that, just, that just leaves me and i've, I've gone a bit yeah. left field i thought it's scotland and like dave i thought high wing airplane for good visibility but i thought i need something that's kind of it's it's kind of good for short fields don't panic, it's not a mall. Um, good for short fields, kind of, and you know, nice stooge, low, low, low cruise speed, short, um, nice, robust undercarriage, low stall speed, so I can go in and out of anywhere. I picked, I found this in the classified, a fabulous Fiesler Storch. Uh, only it's just had a restoration, 9,000 hours to, to get that uh, flying, but it's just perfect. Um, and low, slow, um, you know, slow land anywhere, great visibility. I reckon that's perfect for the sites of Scotland. Um, I can cruise around at, at 70 knots. Um, just hope a German military marked aeroplane won't draw too much attention. Uh, and, and apart from Dave's, which is definitely the best bargain aeroplane here, mine's cheaper than Johnny's and Ian's. Uh, and you can pick that up for a mere 600k. Uh, in the classifieds and i'm sure there's people in the comments who are going oh i really need a storch so you know <laughs> I've the link with me and i'll stick that in the comments just in case one of you decides to buy that tonight so um and i thought i'd just point out that, that johnny's airplane and my airplane if you can yeah. if you end up somewhere where you can't get any av any jet fuel it's okay ours will run on ours will run on av gas mo gas or probably whiskey I would imagine. Whiskey, yeah. <laughs> well, frankly, that would be the best thing you could do with whiskey because it is. It is, it is, it is <laughs> that, that might be your most controversial statement on a live stream ever. So. <laughs> Not really. I, 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 nobody, surely nobody actually likes it. It's just a pretense, isn't it? That everyone has to pretend <laughs> to like it. So, looking at the comments, um, uh, Annabelle says, "Bilge pump." Um, Johnny wins unless Ed has something amazing. Hopefully, my my aeroplane was amazing enough. Martin Hans says, "How about crappy? That's not for sale, Martin." And you know, it's a bit gauche, isn't it? I and mean, you wouldn't really, you know, as nice as Mike Patey creations are, it's a bit, it's a bit like America does Scottish touring. Yeah, that would look fine at the trunk of course. Uh, Johnny wins. Um, uh, Never a mall says uh, Lyndon Griffith. Jet propelled bags pipe says Aviator Steve. Um, I agree with Annabelle, which must be about the Johnny wins. Claire B. Johnny wins. Gorgeous choice, Johnny. I have to say, even I, I'm, I'm liking Johnny's choice. Um, can, I, can I just ask everyone who in the comments if they have they forgotten this? <laughs> it would it would appear that they might have done already uh biggles biplane says cub but johnny possibly has it yeah i think so johnny wins uh for the first time i know johnny is i'm sure johnny has won in the past mm. um uh what else we got uh johnny is johnny's good tonight um helio courier says pete bengeli <laughs> would be a good choice uh, david eats <laughs> yeah um well, david uh, pine <laughs> on float <laughs> Johnny wins. Um, no trousers. No. Johnny wins. Ed wins. 
Dave wins, says Martin Hands. Johnny wins. So I think it is. I mean, oh, Edwin, it's a close second. Johnny wins. It is. I mean, that is a very deserving winner. I feel because well, that I is think. spectacular. Yeah, I think I think Paul should get the casting oh. vote though. He <laughs> loses. <laughs> <laughs> First, firstly, I'd say there was a wonderful segue there with uh, with, with Mr. Trump on his golf course because obviously the Storch was once used to to rescue uh, Mussolini, wasn't it, a fascist dictator? So, <laughs> <laughs> if you had to pick um, one of my choices, Paul, what would yeah, you pick? I'm going to do it. Day, day's very practical. Uh, Ian, I was going to go for yours, so I just want to fly with my mates, and I want you to bring all my crap. But then I decided Johnny could do that in more style and. He swung it when he said he's got oxygen for the morning after the big night at Glen Porter. Uh, <laughs> I knew it. it's not about high altitude cruising, it's about fixing that hangover. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, Wonderful. Excuse me. Right. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So, do we give it to Johnny then? I can, yeah. well, I think it's not not a case of giving it to Johnny. I think that's a clear <laughs> walk it. away <laughs> in for Johnny. Johnny. And I want it. I, the irony is that Dave's basically got the only aeroplane that we could probably all just about afford if we sold everything we had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're certainly not on a we're not on a Johnny budget. No, this is no. fancy hangar. So it is fancy hangar. Good, right? Well, thank you very much for that, Dave. What have we got in the way of events coming up then? Right, we're going to start with one we haven't got, which is a Compton Abbas Spring Flying this this weekend. This is their vintage flying. Um, the you know, Compton Abbas, which sits on a bed of chalk, is actually soggy. So uh, uh, that's, that's been postponed. What is on is uh, the Burr Breakfast flying in Ireland. It's hard to believe that's on, but they confirmed it earlier this week that it is going to be on, despite the weather. Top nav competition is supposed to start uh, tomorrow through to the 28th of April. Various airfields are well, sending somewhere. It takes you 15 freaking days. You don't have to do it all 15 days. Oh, right. They've That's got a window, so you can take part, you can avoid the weather. Yeah. Um, okay. but looking ahead to the following weekend, uh, 20th and 21st of April, uh, PCL Live London, the uh, Royal Aero Club's Air Race School at Popham, the Cornish Pasty Flying at Bodmin, and the uh, Vintage Aero Club, uh, Vintage Aircraft Club season opener flying is at Slape. And obviously, Aero Friedrichshafen, come and see us. There. Yes, if you're there, yeah. Yeah, come and see us. If you see us walking around with one of these on, come and say hello. Definitely. Cool. I've, I've, got, I've got a great comment before we go. Nigel Hitchman says, the store she uses so much fuel with none available. Apparently, Peter Holloway, who had a store, said it was worse miles per gallon than a Spitfire. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a bad well, choice there. <laughs> you didn't win anyway. Right. I would like I would like to say a huge thanks not only to Continental Aerospace Technologies and Cirrus and Sky Demon, but to the one and only Paul Goodell, the most enthusiastic regular flyer that mm. we have had. Paul, we need you to come yeah. down and do a bit of southern stripping, as it were, and uh and, and get some of that in your in your camera. Um promote promote the south. It's nice down here as well, and it's a bit warm. Uh, yeah, I, I met up with Paul last year. He does come south every so so often. So, yeah, I'll do it again. Do it again this time. Um, anyway, so thank you very much, team. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. We'll see you possibly next Wednesday, depending on the bandwidth we can get. Hopefully next Thursday from Ed's uh, hotel room, as it were. And uh, we hope to see you in Friedrich's Harbour. Have a good weekend flying if you manage to get airborne. Otherwise, thank you very much. Have a good one. See you soon. Thank you, Take care, everybody. Bye.